second Sunday of Easter, whether you're listening to us live or catching up later on in the day. Um, you will by now all have received the sad news about the Prince, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Um, just so that you know, there will be or is a place on Facebook, our Facebook page, in which you can enter condolences or reminiscences if you have any or comments. And you'll be most welcome to do that. I think it's appropriate that I start with a short prayer for Prince Philip and the royal family. Let us pray. God of our lives, we give you thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love of our country, for his devotion to duty, and his concerns for young people. We entrust him now to your love and mercy. And we also pray, of course, for Queen and his and all the family that you will be with them as a support and an assurance in the days ahead this we ask through our lord and savior jesus christ who lived and died and rose again amen now it is of course still the season of easter and so it is appropriate that we continue in that vein because of course easter brings us hope of new life and life beyond death so we begin with the easter acclamation hallelujah christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah and now we Call it the start of the service. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all is known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given us your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now our first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Now, a short reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you that it was from the beginning what we have heard, what we have seen in our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it. 
and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that your joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie, and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is the light, we have fellowship one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we have say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for all our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Now I'm going to read another of the Gospel accounts from John of the following the resurrection. Follow straight on last week's reading about Mary Magdalene in the garden. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. 
This is the word of the Lord. Now I'm going to say a few words. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thomas always seems to get a bit of a bad rap. He's eternally associated with the moniker Doubting. So that we sometimes forget some of his other qualities as a disciple of Jesus, and a very loyal one too, such as when Jesus predicts his death but resolutely turns his face to Jerusalem, it is he who says, Then let us go and die with him. I think Thomas is an encouraging person. I think we need someone at this time of Easter remind us that not everyone believes immediately, that some of us grapple with doubts. And Jesus actually tells Thomas it's okay. In fact, of course, Thomas responds in the way and I'm sure any of us would if we were confronted with the risen Jesus. But let's go back to that upper room, behind closed and locked doors, where the defeated and very fearful disciples had taken refuge, hoping the authorities wouldn't notice them. Their hopes and dreams of the future have been well and truly shattered. Then Jesus appears to them. Walls and locks are no barrier to him. The whole situation changes. His first words are, Peace be with you. Familiar to term of greeting. Yes, they had failed. They'd run away. They'd let Jesus down. But there is no reproach here. Simply love, peace, and acceptance. Had taken refuge. Even the authorities wouldn't notice them. Their hopes and dreams for the future have been well and truly shattered. Then Jesus And this changes the whole situation. Down. There is no reproach. Yes, they have failed. They have let it down, but there is no reproach. Simply love, peace, and acceptance. The risen Jesus brings joy and hope, even to fearful situations. His appearance proves that death has been defeated. Life, joy, and hope have triumphed. The disciples' apparent circumstances have apparently not changed, and yet they have. Jesus' peace and joy are the springboard for commissioning the disciples. The Father had sent Jesus into the world. Now Jesus sends his followers to the world. In this account, Jesus imparts the Holy Spirit to his disciples, there and then. If they forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven empowered by the Holy Spirit. All the remaining disciples, except Thomas, who was on this first occasion elsewhere, we know not where. On being told by the excited disciples that Jesus is risen, he refuses 
believe this may have been in the peak because he had missed out on the big event. He certainly had missed out. He probably thought his companions were deluded. So maybe rather grumpily, he says he won't believe unless he can see Jesus' wounds and touch them. Then, of course, Jesus turns up again, fully aware of Thomas's doubts. We don't know whether Thomas did actually need to have his gruesome request fulfilled. It is unlikely. His belief is complete and honest. My Lord and my God. Jesus uses this opportunity to say that all who have actually from the dead are indeed blessed. But even more so are those who have not seen. Just about every Christian ever, apart from a few. The reading ends by telling us that the whole purpose of Jesus' coming to earth is that we might have life in his name. This our God, the God of peace joy and life and our work is to tell this to the world. Amen. Now we're going to have a time of prayer. Let's pray. Christ our risen Lord, no tomb can keep you, no door is closed to you, no heart is barred to you, no mind is shut off from you. Come, lead us out of darkness into light, out of doubt into faith, out of death into life eternal. Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. We pray for all who are witnesses to your resurrection, for those who speak of your presence, for preachers of the word, and ministers of the sacraments, for all who reveal you by the way they live. We pray for all who are in doubt, for those who are seeking you. We pray for unity in the church and in the world. My Lord, we come today with the oppressed people who have lost hope, the hostages, and those imprisoned. They may find your love. We call to you. We pray for the fellowships to which we belong. And give thanks for your appearing in the upper room. And we pray for our homes and loved ones, especially those we may not. We call to you. We're despairing. Those who lack confidence, who doubt their abilities. We remember the lonely. We pray for the fearful. And for the sick in body, mind or spirit, give them the risen Christ. The risen Lord is our hope in death and to eternity. We pray especially for those Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Ernest Kitchen. And whose anniversaries fall at this time, and that we with them may have my Lord and my God. And we, we 
we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, before we conclude, um, I think we are having problems with connectivity web, so the transmission might not be quite the highest quality that you're now getting used to. Um, I would, though, like to say there will be service next Sunday, and also that I am now in house um, isolation, um, and hopefully this is for real this time. Um, I'll catch up on that later. Um, so we'll finish with closing prayer, and the blessing. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Another blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work, do his will, working in you, with all pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, those whom you love and for whom you pray, today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>